of you here, not because you want to learn JavaScript, but because we want to work with satellite data. So let's learn how to find satellite data and how to use that in Earth Engine. So stop typing, eyes here. Again, you'll have an exercise at the end of this as well. Uh, the Earth Engine data catalog has a lot of data, so let's go and find some data. How do you get to the data catalog? Well, you are here. I, the easiest way to get to the data catalog is through this help button here. There's this help button, which will get you to the user guide. So user guide is the, the main documentation for Earth Engine. We're going to learn a lot about how this is organized and how, what are the different things. But here, there's a link to the data catalog. So I can click this data catalog. And this opens up this page, which is the collection of all the data sets that are available in Earth Engine. It's organized uh, at the top. You can see there are the three main remote sensing data set, Landsat, Sentinel, and MODIS. Uh, if you want to use that, you can just directly use that. You can also browse it by categories. So let's say you're working on a project on climate. And you said, I don't really know what data set I can use. You can go and browse the climate section here. It'll tell you what data sets are available in Earth Engine. And you can learn this. And this is also a very useful way to say, you know, what, what, is the, what are the possibilities? And a lot of times when you're defining your project, it, you are restricted by what data is available. So, you know, working on a new project helps to just go and browse all the data set that's available here. The, there's also a search. If you're looking for a specific data, let's say I'm looking for this particular precipitation data, you can just search for it and it'll find the data. So you can search for it as well. Right now, we want to work with Sentinel-2 data. So I'm going to click the Sentinel section. This is all the different data set from different Sentinel satellites. There's Sentinel-1, which is the radar data. Sentinel-2 is optical data. There's Sentinel-3, Sentinel-5, etc. Let's go to the Sentinel-2. This is the the 10 meter resolution data set open access uh, available, the, one of the highest resolution data set that's available for remote sensing. Earth Engine has two versions of this. That is level one and level two. Anybody knows what's the difference, level one and level two? Process? Yeah. So uh, when the satellite captures an image of the Earth, it's there's light reflected from the surface of the Earth. It reaches the satellite, and what is recorded is just how bright that pixel was. That's what the satellite records, and that's level zero. So if you're working with satellite data, you download the data from the satellite. It'll be just raw data of how bright the pixel was. You need to correct for a lot of things where the sun was, how you know was the geometry of the satellite, etc. You do all the correction. You end up with this data called level one, which is called top of atmosphere reflectance. It is the reflectance of the pixel measured at the satellite after it has reached, passed through the atmosphere. So the sun's light gets, hits the surface of the Earth, gets passed through the atmosphere, reaches the satellite, and you get level one data. So this is also rectified. The scene will sit on the place on the Earth, but it is showing you the reflectance as measured in the satellite. There's still atmosphere behind in that. So if the same pixel is measured twice, the atmosphere content is different, you'll get different values. So if you want to get real reflectance, at the ground, as if you went to the ground and measured it, you want level two data, which is called surface reflectance. It corrects for atmosphere. It'll take the content of the atmosphere that was there at that moment, apply the corrections, and do this. Doing level two processing is also very hard. You need a lot of ancillary data. It's also modeled. You cannot really know exactly how the atmosphere is. It's also a model. But uh, whenever you can, use the level two data. So that's the most accurate representation of the ground. In case of Sentinel-2, you have to make a choice because this level one data is available from 2015 onwards. The level two is available 2017 onwards. And because ESA did not have enough data to correct for atmospheric stuff before 2017. Yes, sir. Maybe just to also add on, you can actually, so the, the effects that uh, Ujjaval is mentioning, you could actually see them in the two images. They're over the exact same place, but you notice that the surface reflectance product uh, comes out sharper because, again, they've removed this haze that's basically, you know, between the satellite and the image. So as, as he was mentioning, you know, for a good part, you probably want to use the surface reflectance data, but again, you're limited that there are two years that you'll be missing. But again, for a lot of applications, we would probably want to go with surface, surface reflectance versus top of the atmosphere. Uh, Earth Engine catalog also consists of all of the Landsat products as level two. So if you were working with Landsat, they already have level two data, MODIS level two data, all of those exist. So whenever you can, use the level two data because that's the most accurate representation. 
let's see if I want to work with development data, what do I do? So you can click here, and you end up at this page. This page is known as the data description page. Uh, this describes what the data is, so it says this is the name of the data, the availability, right? The key thing to remember is this is a live data set. That means as soon as a new satellite scene is captured, Earth Engine will fetch it and load it. So it you know, keeps updating with the data set that's there. This is the ID of the, the data set. There's some description here. You can read about what the data is. All of this description also will link to the canonical documentation. So if you say, I want to understand how this band five was processed, and you can click here and find the, the main data set. Some of these are very hard to find. Even sometimes when I'm working with some Landsat product and I really want to understand, this is a good way to find it, like, because the Earth Engine team has already linked to the canonical documentation of that. There's a section here called bands. These are multispectral data. The satellite measures the reflectance in different wavelengths, and these are described here. So if, when you load the data, you'll see different bands. Band, and you say, what is band four? And it says band four is red. This is what the, the documented here. Also see the range of wavelengths, the resolution. This is the 10 meter per pixel resolution. So all of this information is here. So sometimes you say, I want to compute this index. I want to know what is a short wave infrared band. And you come here and say, oh, this one is band 11 here. Right? So you can uh, learn about the data here. There's an image properties section. This is all the metadata that comes with each image in the collection. Each image has this metadata, which is provided by uh, the satellite provider. So it has got things like how much clouds are there, what is the satellite, what level of processing was done, and so on. Right? It's got a lot of metadata that's available here. So in terms of use, all the data in the Earth Engine data catalog allow for uh, you know, reuse, commercial use, et cetera. It's open access. But sometimes you may have to cite the data. So make sure you read this and say, I will cite it correctly uh, to use the data. The most important part of this page is at the bottom. So if you come to the page at the bottom, you can see there's a section here, Explore with Earth Engine. So if I'm working with the new data, I don't really know how to use this, what bands to use, how to visualize this. You can come here, there's some code which you can copy and directly start using this data. Super helpful when I'm, I'm working with the new data, I will just find this page here, load this, so I have something to see and something to start with. Okay, so let's see how this works. I'm gonna take this and press this copy button. There's a copy code sample button here. Copy this, come back to my script here and paste it and I'm gonna run this. Do not worry about understanding the code yet. The more important part, at the end of today, you'll understand everything that it's doing. But right now, I can see some image. You can see this is Lisbon, and I see images over Lisbon. And you can see what Sentinel-2 data looks like. And it's quite nice. I still get goosebumps every time I see this kind of data. I did remote sensing 20 years back, where even getting access to like one Landsat scene was a challenge. And now you get free images at 10 meter resolution everywhere in the world, free of cost. Like, this is amazing, this time that we live in, right? So again, take a moment to appreciate the, the access that ESA is providing you and Earth Engine allowing you to access this. Um, so you can see the image, the Sentinel-2, 10 meter resolution, you can see some buildings, some roads, cannot really see cars as much, but still a pretty good resolution data. You can do a lot of interesting things with it. I recently saw the most amazing thing people had done, that. Uh, some, you can actually see the, the windmills, and you can see the blades of the windmills. And somebody uh, said that is the way you capture this data. So they are captured sequentially. So band one, band two. So satellite captures it sequentially. And there's a slight delay, a few milliseconds of delay. Somebody used that to say, I'll see the position of the windmill blades in band one, band two, band three, and it'll compute the velocity of the windmill. And they have a global data with the wind speeds based on that. Right? So kind of amazing application of this data, you can use this. So it's great, you can kind of do this, but when you say, okay, Lisbon is great, but you don't want to see Lisbon probably, right? You want to see your own city, your own study area. So uh, what we can do is Earth Engine has this place here. You can search places, right? I'm gonna search for the city of Bangalore in India. You can search and I load, and now you'll see images over city of Bangalore. And you can go and zoom in and see how does the city look. So you, maybe you find something interesting and you say, hey, uh, I've written this code to see something interesting, and you send this code to your friend. And they run it, you go back to Lisbon. The reason you go back to Lisbon is look at the last few lines of code here. It has got these two lines, says, or one line, so map.setcenter to this coordinates. 
That means when you run this code, set the center of the map to this particular place. Let's learn how to change this, right? I want to change this to your own city. So I'm going to run this again. Go to the city that I'm interested in, zoom into the place, and then I'm going to switch to the Inspector tab at the top here. You are in the console, I'm going to switch to Inspector tab, and then click somewhere. I'm going to click somewhere on the map. And you can see it gives you some information printed here. Here, I'm going to expand the zippy for the point, and it says this is the latitude, longitude, and zoom level of the place where I just clicked. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace the code here and say map.setCenter to this coordinates. Again, you don't need so much precision, uh, but you can do this. This is probably looking at like a fly on the wall in the city. So, and zoom level, uh, when you zoomed out, it's level zero. As you increase the level, it will go further and further. So if you want more zoomed in view, increase the zoom level. So this one is 11, and I run this. Now when I run the code, it will always come here because it's setting the data to my city. Right? If I change the zoom level to be like 15, it's going to zoom in more, right? and it's going to show you this data on that. Thank you, Jawa. I think that's a great example. I guess just one other trick as well is that our good friends from Google, I guess if you went back to the Sentinel page, so in addition to giving you the, uh, the ability to copy the code, if you go to the very bottom, they always also have that other option to just open it up directly so you don't have to, you know. Yeah, copy. you can just click the link and open it. It's great. All right, do not worry about the rest of the code. We're going to do this. But let's try this out, exercise 2C. Go and find the Sentinel-2 page in the dataset description. Find your city, write code so that when you run it, it should go to your city or your study area. Okay, go and try this out. You can go to the data catalog directly from this link or I just like to just use this, the user guide. Yeah, there's a question around how to get the coordinates. You need to switch to this inspector tab. So wherever you search for a city and go to the place, you can just search, search for the inspector and then click on it, which will display the, the lat long of the place. And it's always uh, longitude Yes, that's an interesting observation. This is a kind of perennial debate in geospatial, right? Is it lat long or x, y? Uh, so you say lat long, but latitude is actually y coordinate. Longitude is x-coordinate. So when you're coding, typically you follow the x-y convention. Earth Engine follows the x-y convention. So you use it. Google Maps follows lat long because people like to say lat long. So it's always confusing. Look at the documentation. Earth Engine says we want uh, longitude first. No, oh, at the oh, bottom. So, so Go to this, yeah, this one. Copy this. Oh, the whole thing. Yeah, I'm whole sorry. thing. Yeah. Okay. And then at the bottom, there's a. You'll also notice clouds. Some of you, if you live in a region where it's cloudy, you'll see clouds. But so we'll. That's one of the limitations of optical remote sensing data. They are affected by clouds. We'll learn some techniques to deal with that. But yeah, if you.
why not bring in Google Earth Navigation like as a yeah, great question. So there's a question of, uh, can we use the Google Earth's high-res imagery? Right? You can see that image in Earth Engine. So in the base map here, there is a satellite view. So if I want to see the base map, Google Maps imagery, you can switch to satellite, and you'll see this high-res imagery. But this imagery is not owned by Google. It's not open data. It's owned by companies like Maxar. Google licenses it. It's not available for analysis. If you want high-res data, you can buy this data and upload to Earth Engine, or a lot of these providers will directly load into Earth Engine, and you can use it. So this high res data is only available as a reference for viewing, not for analysis. Also, uh, people who are kind of working with Sentinel data, uh, there's a very confusing word here called harmonized Sentinel-2. Right? This caused a lot of confusion. Uh, this is not harmonized Landsat Sentinel data set. This is the new data set that you know, there's a NASA just announced. This is not that. This is just Sentinel-2 data, but ESA changed how they process data in 2023. So they said, we'll add 0.2 to your reflectance starting 2023. They just decided that that's what they'll do. So when you do a time series, you have your reflectances in 2023, it'll increase by 0.2. And this caused a lot of problems with people, right? And so you say, oh, you can correct it because you need to do it. So Earth Engine says, okay, we'll correct it for you. So this harmonized Sentinel-2 will just correct for that change in processing. So you have a harmonized time series. It's just that. So all the Earth Engine users should use this data set not the old data. So you see the ID, it says S2 harmonized. The previous, if you have a code, they refined somewhere, S2. There's still a lot of code floating around on the internet, which says S2. And recently I spent like hours debugging somebody's code. I say, you know, they used S2 and they did this analysis and they, it's not working. And they're like, oh, you're doing 2023. I understand. Okay, now you need to switch to the harmonized collection and it'll work. Right? So make sure that this is what harmonized means. They've also started just recently ingesting the HLS data, harmonized line set sentinel. That's awesome new data set, but that's not this one. Right? So just be aware of that. All right, time's up. Anybody OK to move on? So we learned how to access the data, how to find the data set you need. Whenever you need the data, go and you know, find this uh, data set description, load the data. I also want to point people to this catalog. Sam, Sam has disappeared, but. Uh, yeah, so Sam runs this amazing service called GE Awesome Community Catalog. There are a lot of data sets which are open access but not available in the main catalog. So if you, Sam collects those and uploads that in Earth Engine and it acts as a catalog. And this got some really useful data set. Uh, so again, if you're working on a project, go and come to browse this data and you'll find some amazing data set that are there. Works the same way. You have a data description page, you have the details, and you have a snippet you can just load in Earth Engine. So Sam has done all the hard work to actually load all this data and use this. Uh, really amazing socioeconomic data, demographic data, which is not in the main catalog. So go and search this catalog as well for useful data sets. <laughs>